Hello, my name is Andrew Holland, CEO of the Fusion Industry Association. As you know, every two weeks we launch an episode of our Fusion News series, where our great presenters give an update on the major fusion energy news and summarize why the technology advances behind the headlines are so important. But for today's episode, at the end of the year, we'd like to give a recap of some of the biggest moments in fusion energy in 2024. Even though I've said it every year since we started, 2024 was another big year for fusion. Just some of the key highlights include big announcements of new funding into private companies. We saw the $6 billion we announced in 2023 grow to over $8 billion today. And governments are increasingly getting into the game as well, tracking exciting announcements about new investments and funding from Germany, Japan, and the US this year. Public-private partnership programs combine the best of national labs and universities with the nimbleness and drive of the private sector. Regulatory bodies have begun solidifying fusion-specific regulations in key countries around the world. Companies are citing locations for first plants, have signed power purchase agreements, and are building quickly. Suppliers are ramping up to support as well. And the workforce is growing. Over 4,000 people are now directly employed in the 45 fusion de developer companies worldwide. And since Fusion Ignition, more energy out than in, was achieved for the first time ever on Earth in December 2022, it has been repeated multiple times at even higher yields. So to discuss these stories and more, you'll see some clips from our presenters up next. These are just some of the top Fusion moments from the year. Thanks, and we look forward to another big year in 2025. One, Startup Pacific Fusion nabs $900 million in funding. Our first story today is a big one and centers around the company Pacific Fusion. Never heard of them before? Well, you're not alone. The company is quite new and up until recently, it was completely in stealth mode. Several weeks ago, however, the company announced it raised over 900 million US dollars in Series A funding, representing one of the largest investment rounds in Fusion to date. It's no wonder then that this story has been featured on Wired and Bloomberg and is really drumming up excitement throughout the fusion industry. But what is Pacific Fusion? Well, the company, based in Fremont, California, is not actually pursuing one specific approach to fusion. Rather, its aim is to leverage decades of research into pulsed power engineering technology, and in particular into impedance-matched marks generators. This technology can deliver 100 nanosecond bursts of energy that account for the propagation of forward and reversed electromagnetic waves in the system. This tech can be used for a number of different fusion methods, from laser inertial fusion to magnetic Z pinches, and the potential applications are detailed in an open access paper entitled Opportunities in Pulsed Magnetic Fusion Energy. As Pacific Fusion develops their technology, that $900 million will be released under the completion of certain milestones. The team at Pacific Fusion consists of 44 people with experience in deep tech and fusion research at National Labs. Eric Lander, one of the founders, led the Human Genome Project and is founding director of the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard. So Pacific Fusion is certainly making waves as they start with a heavyweight team and incredibly strong funding. Going forward, I'm sure they're one to keep your eyes on. Two, Thales and the Max Planck Institute for Plasma Physics set a world record in the field of nuclear fusion. Next up is the news from Thales about their collaboration with the Max Planck Institute for Plasma Physics and the major milestone achieved in the Wendell Stein 7X Accelerator project with its TH157E gyrotron. This advanced device reached a total output of 1.3 megawatts in radio frequency at 140 gigahertz for 360 seconds. The gyrotron plays a crucial role in heating and stabilizing the plasma within the accelerator, helping achieve the extreme temperatures required for magnetic confinement fusion. The Wendelstein 7X project aims to deepen the scientific understanding of plasma physics while advancing the development of commercial fusion technology, which could provide a clean, sustainable energy source. Fusion energy, seen as a critical solution for reducing global carbon emissions, does not produce greenhouse gases and relies on resources that are abundantly available in nature. As a result, 
it holds great potential to address both the growing demand for energy across sectors like transportation, construction and agriculture, as well as the urgent need to cut carbon emissions. Charles Antoine Goffin, Vice President of the Microwave and Imaging Subsystems at Thales, stated, This technological breakthrough positions Thales at the forefront of high power plasma heating solutions, essential for addressing the energy challenges of tomorrow. Three, the nuclear fusion industry is having a growth spurt. This story is from Axios, and it summarizes the 2024 Global Fusion Industry Report, which is released by the Fusion Industry Association. Over $900 million was directed towards fusion companies in the last year, and three new fusion companies were formed. This brings the total investment in the private fusion industry to over $7.1 billion. Over $426 million of that is public funding, showing the growing role of public-private partnerships. Over 4,000 people are employed by these companies, which is a 34% increase over 2023 and a 300% increase since 2021. 89% of those companies stated that they believe fusion power will be on the grid by the end of the 2030s, and the majority are targeting 2035. So, and I can't stress this enough, fusion is not 30 years away and always will be. We're looking at 10 to 15 years. Four, US startups fusion energy device reaches 37 million degree temperature. Our first news story today comes from fizz.org about FIA member Zap Energy and their unique shared flow stabilized Z-Pinch approach that we've spoken about previously on this channel. For those of you that missed that episode, the technique relies on the conducting plasma generating its own electromagnetic fields to heat and compress it, meaning it doesn't need superconducting magnets or powerful lasers, which are known to be complex and expensive. The news in this case is that Zap Energy's fuse technology has been noted to have achieved plasma electron temperatures of 1 to 3 kilo electron volts, which is roughly equivalent to 11 to 37 million degrees Celsius, something which only a handful of fusion technologies have demonstrated thus far. To give you a little context, the temperature at the sun's core is around 15 million degrees Celsius. We've still got a lot of work ahead of us, but our performance to date is advanced to the point that we can now stand shoulder to shoulder with some of the world's preeminent fusion devices, but with great efficiency and at a fraction of the complexity and cost, said Ben Levitt, VP of R&D at Zap. They detail all of this in a research paper in physical review letters. So if you're intrigued and want to know more, that'll give you a lot more of the specific details, including how they collected data and measured temperatures. Five, G7 puts fusion forward at the climate energy and environment ministers meeting. The G7 summit will be held in Italy this year, bringing together heads of state from Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the UK, and the USA. Leading up to the summit, there are many meetings between G7 ministers from these countries who work on specialized topics. On April 29th and the 30th, ministers met to discuss climate, energy, and the environment and they released a communique which identifies actions which they believe their countries need to take on many different topics, including fusion energy. The G7 members recognize that fusion energy has the potential to provide a lasting solution to climate change and energy security. So they've agreed to establish a G7 working group on fusion energy and a G7 exchange to promote a coordinated approach to regulations between the countries. They believe that regulations should ensure a high level of safety, but be proportionate to the relatively low risks of fusion technology. On this channel, we've talked a lot about the importance of getting the regulations right for fusion. It's extremely important that the regulatory framework is in place to give some certainty to the rapidly growing fusion energy industry. The US and UK led the world by proactively passing laws and regulations to ensure that fusion is treated separately from fission in a manner that protects the public while encouraging innovation. But the transition to low carbon energy sources is a global endeavor and not just in the US and UK. So I'm very excited about this progress at the G7. A coordinated approach to regulations could mean that a fusion power plant designed in one country can be deployed in another country, which means fusion can be rolled out quickly. Six. 
Helion secures license for Polaris Fusion. FIA member Helion Energy has received a license from the Washington State Department of Health to operate its next fusion device, called Polaris, which is planned as a demonstration of electricity production. This follows the July passage of the Advance Act in the U.S. Congress, which codified fusion energy regulations separate from nuclear fission and involves states in the regulation of fusion energy. So as you can see, great progress has been made this year, but there's still a lot to do to get to the deployment of commercial fusion and reap the benefits of a zero carbon, safe, and virtually limitless en energy source. We look forward to another busy year in 2025 Wishing you and your loved ones a happy and healthy year ahead. Thanks for watching. You can subscribe to our channel to stay updated on the fusion news developments below.